this class we are discussing the electrical measurements okay so now in this class we are discussing about so for unit instrument transformers and potentiometers okay so now in this one so in uh, up to previous class we are completed the instrument transformers okay so instrument transformers are mainly two types those are current transformer and potential transformer we, ha we have to see that working of that current transformer and instrument transform no, sorry potential transformers so now in this class we are discussing about the potentiometers okay so what is the potentiometers potentiometer and what are the types of potentiometers let us discuss Okay. See, potentiometers. Okay, so potentiometers are used to measure low unknown EMF. Okay, so potentiometer is a uh, instrument. Okay, so why you are using the potentiometers? Means potentiometers are used to measure the low unknown EMF value, unknown voltage value. Okay, so the potentiometers are a uh, two types okay depending upon supply okay the potentiometers are mainly two types those are dc potentiometers ac potentiometers okay so what are the potentiometers dc potentiometers ac potentiometers okay so now let us see the basic potentiometer circuit this is a basic potentiometer circuit <clears throat> okay so here in basic potentiometer circuit you have a galvanometer and this one is a rheostat and here you are using a sliding wire b1 it is a, b2 is a working battery and b1 is a unknown emf okay the emf okay the emf which is to be measured okay so that is uh, uh, connected across the b1 and here you have to connect the slide wire whenever you have to giving the supply so whenever you have to close this switch at that time here the um, galvanometer shows will be de deflection so whenever galvanometer will shows the null deflection so at that time it will be the slide by along the sliding contact will be moves so whenever the galvanometer will um, shows the null deflection at that time so what is the length of that battery okay so at, at that time the emf will be known as the unknown emf e1 okay so previously eh, whenever you have to switch on so at that time Uh, the, there will be a sliding wire is at some particular length that length will be l1 so whenever it will shows the null deflection so at that time it will shows the another length that is nothing but l2 whenever l1 l2 and e2 e2 is nothing but the known emf known emf values will be known so at that time you have to find out the unknown emf value okay this is nothing but the potentiometer working first of all standardization okay so Uh, for any potentiometer first you have to working of the potentiometer first you have to standardize that potentiometer what is the standardization is nothing but see here the process of adjusting the working current in such a way that the voltage drop across the portion of the sliding wire matches okay see here so standardization is nothing but the process okay so the process of adjusting the working current in such a way that the voltage drop across a sliding wire will be matches okay so the voltage drop across the sliding wire matches with the working current okay so that process is nothing but the standardization see here uh, here you have to stand so in here rs is a standardized resistance okay so r r you start same same a potentiometer so the standardization is nothing but a potentiometer process so here standard cell okay so the emf uh, unknown emf is connected across the standard cell C 
screen. So potentiometers are mainly two types. What are those? DC potentiometers and AC potentiometers. Okay, so in DC potentiometer, one of the type of the DC potentiometers is nothing but DC Crampton potentiometer. Okay, so in, uh, in this class, we are discussing about the working of the DC Crampton potentiometer. See here, the DC Crampton potentiometer consisting of a galvanometer and is having a slide well twisted in a round shape. Okay, so this is a dial. Okay, so this is a dial and this dial you have to points up to 1.5 that means 15 readings okay so here the dial switch will shows the 15 readings for this dial switch here you have to giving the battery e negative and this battery positive is connected to the rheostat okay so and this is a working so here in between 0 to 0 0.1 okay and here switch okay resistance and this is a unknown emf okay the unknown EMF value which is which is to be measured and here you have to connect it to a stand cell for standardization okay so shape first whenever galvanometer will shows null deflection so at that time you have to read this slide by you have to take the readings and dial switch you have to read the, uh, take the voltage but whenever you have to close this switch, so whenever you have to giving the, the voltage value, so at that time, thus, uh, uh, the you have to, whenever you have to adjust the rheostat, start, at that time the working current will close to the slide wire, okay, and dial switch, at that time it will shows the another readings, okay, so at that time you have to find out the unknown EMF value. See here, steps used for making the measurement with potentiometer. So any potentiometer, that is either DC potentiometer or potentiometer, see here. The combination of dial resistor and slide wire is set to the standard steel voltage. So in previous diagram, you have to see the dial resistors and the slide wire. Both are set to the standard steel voltage. Supposing the value of EMF of standard steel is 1.0186 volts. Okay, so here the EMF. Okay, so the EMF of the standard steel is 1.0186 volts. The dial resistors put at 1 volt. Okay, at the time dial resistor put at 1 volt and slide wire is put at 0 0.0180 setting. So at the time the total voltage of the unknown EMF will be 1.0186 volts. Okay, the switch, here you have to connect the switch. The switch is SC strong to calibrate the position and galvanometer key is tapped with while the resistor is adjusted for the zero deflection on the galvanometer. So by you are connecting the galvanometer to the rheostat means by adjusting the rheostat. So whenever you are varying the rheostat, so at that time you have to adjust the rheostat until you have to get the null deflection in the galvanometer. Okay, this completes the standardization process for the potentiometer. This total process is nothing but the standardization. Okay, after completion of standardization, whenever we have to complete the standardization, the switch is, is operate, uh, thrown to operate position thereby connecting the unknown EMF into the potentiometer circuit. Okay, first whenever galvanometer will be shows null deflection, that is nothing but the standardization. After that, you have to giving the supply. So at that time, the unknown EMF come, comes into the circuit. As the balance is approached, the protective resistance is short circuited and final adjustment are made to obtain true balance. So whenever you have to uh, close on the switch at that time, so the dial will show the another reading, sliding wire position will be also changes. At that time, the value of unknown EMF is read off directly from the setting of the dial adjust and slide wire. So at that time, directly, at that time, you have to take the in, uh, cramp, DC cramp and potentiometer. At that time, you have to uh, directly take in the value of unknown EMF from the, directly from the setting. That means from the dial value and slide value. Whenever you have to add the both values, uh, both voltages value, at that time, you have to get the unknown EMF value. See, applications okay so applications of dc potentiometers okay now we have to see the applications of dc potentiometer the applications of dc potentiometers are measurement of voltage measurement <coughs> measurement of resistance measurement of current okay so these are the main applications of dc potentiometers so that means by using the dc potentiometers we have to find out the Measurement of unknown voltage, unknown resistance and current. That means in terms of unknown EMF. Okay, that is how you can see. 
See, first one is what measurement of unknown resistance. Okay. Okay. Next one is what first uh, in applications of DC potentiometer. First application is measurement of resistance. Okay. See here. Uh, so here RS. RS means standard resistance. Uh, sorry. the resistance which is to be measured unknown resistance r means known resistance these two are connected to potentiometer so along this resistors here you have to connect the ammeter so this is adjusted by using a neostat for this one you have to giving the dc supply okay so for this one to operate this total ammeter and resistance here you have to giving the stable dc supply first of all let the voltage across the standard resistance here Mm, the voltage across the stand the standard resistance. Okay, that means the resistance which is to be okay. Here R S is nothing but standard resistance and R is nothing but unknown resistance. So whenever let the voltage drop across the standard resistance, V V R S. Okay, then you can write. So at that time, I so directly voltage drop is nothing but current into resistance. So from the ammeter, the current will flowing through the resistance R S is I, and voltage drop across V R S is becomes V R S equal to I into R S. Similarly, let the voltage across the unknown resistance. Okay, unknown resistance B V R. Okay, so here V R. So then you can write V R equal to I into R. So whenever you have write V R by V R S, that is equal to R by R S. So at that time you get uh, you want R R equal to R S into V R by V R S. That means whenever you have to know V R V R S and V R S value. R S is nothing but standard resistance value, the value which is to be known. So whenever you have to know these all known values from these known values here you have to find out the unknown resistance R value. Here mistake will be given. So R equal to R S into V R by V R S. Okay. So this is the measurement of resistance. Okay. This is the one of the application for the DC Crampton potentiometer. Next. We have to see the measurement of current. Okay. Similarly, here also. For measurement of current, here we have to find out the uh, ammeter to be calibrated. Okay, current means current will be find uh, measured out by ammeter. Okay, so here initially, so when uh, whenever you have to giving the supply, okay, uh, so at that time there will be a um, voltage drops across across the force adjustment and fine adjustment. Whenever you have to know these two values. So, Voltage drop uh, drop values I equal to uh, V by V by R. Okay, so from this, whenever you have to know the voltage and resistance values, so at that time the current, the current unknown current, which is to be uh, which is to be known where that value will be find out by using this ammeter. Similarly, this is my this is this uh, same diagram is also applicable for the measurement of voltage. Okay. So up to now we have discussed the DC Crampton potentiometer. Next one is AC potentiometers. Okay, so what are the next two potentiometers? AC. See here, AC potentiometers can be classified into two types. Okay, here also AC potentiometers are again classified into two types. Since AC quantity can be represented in the form of molar and coordinate form. Why? Because DC means we have only uh, expressed in only one notation. That is DC. But here uh, AC potentiometers are classified into two types. Since AC quantity can be represented in the form of polar and also coordinate form. Okay, polar form and coordinate form. Okay, those two types are polar type potentiometer V at an angle of theta, coordinate type potentiometer V1 plus J V2. Okay, so whenever you have to represent the so potentiometer is nothing but you are want to find out the EMF unknown EMF value. Okay, so that unknown EMF value is uh, Uh, find out by using in the form of polar that is nothing but polar type potentiometer 
uh, whenever that unknown emf value is expressed in terms of the coordinate type okay so that means in the form of rectangular form v1 plus j v2 so that is nothing but the coordinate type potentiometer see this is the construction of a polar type potentiometer okay so in this one this is a rotor circuit okay these two are the stator winding okay so these two will be connected to the a so this is a one variable resistor and we have one variable capacitor and here this one this rotor having a dry polar type uh, scale okay so this potentiometer is also called as dry slate potentiometer okay so this is a dry slate scale okay so this will be shows the phase angle and this will be connected to the here the potentiometer to test the circuit okay so that means this having a the row stator and rotor coming to the working of the polar type potentiometer okay so when current flows in stator winding whenever you have to giving the ac supply so at that time the current the current the current starts to flow in stator winding at that time the rotating at that time rotating magnetic field will be produced in the a rotor uh, magnetic field produced so that the rotating magnetic field which induces the emf in the rotor okay so at that time it produces the emf in the rotor the phase displacement of the rotor emf is equal to the rotor moment angle from its original position and it is related to the stator supply volt is okay so see here whenever you have to giving the ac supply to the stator winding okay so at that time it will be induces the magnetic field so and it will causes the emf produced in the rotor okay so at that time the rotor will moves okay so that movement will be taken okay so that movement is proportional to the stator supply voltage okay so that position will be related to the how much amount of voltage okay how much amount of voltage will be applied to the stator stator so that means that is nothing but that uh, that supply so that means that is equal to the moment of the supply voltage okay so that voltage uh, that how much voltage will be equal to the stator that is nothing but the unknown emf unknown ac emf value find out by using the polar type potentiometer so next one is what coordinate type potentiometer okay coordinate type potentiometer okay so this is the construction of a coordinate type potentiometer okay so this is the in phase potentiometer and this is a quadrature potentiometer okay so this is split into the uh, two parts in phase potentiometer quadrature potentiometer okay for in phase supply phase one in phase we have, we have to connect the ammeter okay and so this is a supply to quadrature potentiometer okay and here you have to connect the transformer okay so here for in phase potentiometer you will have count k1 switch s1 and similarly for quadrature potentiometer you have to connect the switch s2 okay so and here you have to connect the vibration galvanometer okay so and here you have to connect k1 switch okay so here you see whenever so here the supply okay here yeah coordinate type is a type potentiometer is also called as the galt insley potentiometer so here you have not mentioned so the another name for uh, coordinate type potentiometer is nothing but the galt insley potentiometer okay so in this one here um, uh, so ac means compulsory you have to giving the supply through the uh, poten uh, transformers okay so here the supply is uh, split into the two phases supply phase 1 supply phase 2 how you can split you have to see in this diagram see here 
place single phase supply so this is uh, split into the two circuit okay so uh, supply phase one supply phase two that means phase split transformer okay so but here you have to directly see okay supply phase one supply phase two r r dash okay so whenever you have to giving the supply at the time switch s1 close s2 close okay s3 so all switches are closed so at the time they have to show the values okay so that means here you have to find out the unknown resistance values whenever you have to find out the unknown resistance and at the time here you have to find out the uh, current values okay the current will flow through this value so at the time finally uh, so the current will flow through the these uh, uh, potentiometer so whenever you have to know the resist resistance and current values at the time you have to power to find out the voltage value okay so that means so at the time you have to find out the voltage drop across in phase potentiometer and the voltage drop across quadrature potentiometer so at the time you have to find out the a uh, total voltage unknown here whenever you want the unknown emf so at the time you have to add the sum of in phase uh, uh potentiometer and quadrature potentiometer see here uh, so uh, next we have to see the working see here to measure unknown emf its terminals are connected across the sliding contacts a dash using the selector switch a s3 okay to find and measure the unknown emf see here the terminals are connected across the switch s3 through a a dash okay by doing so here by doing some adjustments okay here by doing the some adjustment in sliding contacts and rheostat the whole circuit gets balanced and the galvanometer is zero at the balanced condition so first you have to standardize the potentiometer okay so now the in phase component va of the unknown emf is obtained from in phase potentiometer and the quadrature component vb okay and quadrature component vb is obtained from the quadrature potentiometer so at that time you have to know va and vb values so at that time the resultant the resultant of the coordinate ac potentiometer is v equal to square root of va square plus vb square and the phase angle okay phase angle is given by phi equal to tan inverse of vb by va okay so this is the working of ac potentiometers now you have to see the applications okay applications of ac potentiometers okay so what are the applications of ac potentiometers see here first uh, the ac potentiometer is used for the calibration of voltmeter okay that means the ac potentiometer is also used for the measurement of voltage okay see here the ac potentiometer directly measures the low voltages up to 1.5 volts okay so this ac holder this ac potentiometer sir directly measures the voltages up to 1.5 volts the higher voltage is measured by either using the voltage ratio box or two capacitors in series with the potentiometer if suppose we have to find out the higher voltages okay whenever you have to find the higher voltages and that voltage is measured by using the volt ratio box or two capacitors by using the volt ratio box or two capacitors in series with the potentiometer okay whenever with the potentiometer we have to connect the two capacitors or volt ratio box in series so by using this one you have to find out the uh, high voltage value by using the ac potentiometer so next one is what calibration of ammeter okay see here the measurement of alternating current okay the measurement of alternating current may be measured by the use of non inductive standard resistor with the potentiometer okay so the measurement of alternating current okay or alternating current may be measured by using the non inductive standard resistance with the potentiometer whenever you have to connect the non inductive standard resistance with the potentiometer so at that time you have to find out the alternating current value similarly testing of energy meter and watt meter okay so that means to test the energy meter and watt meter okay energy value and power value also we have to use the ac potentiometer so in which in which these applications how we are using is see here uh, uh, the testing circuit of the watt meter and energy meter is same as that of the dc measurement okay so here uh, the testing to test the watt meter or energy meter is same as that of dc how you can find out the dc value like this 
the phase shifting transformer is connected to the potentiometer to vary the phase of the voltage on the current so here to test the energy meter or watt meter here we have to connect the phase shifting transformer is connected to the potentiometer to vary the phase of the voltage on the current thus the voltage and current may vary at different power factors okay so at that time you have to directly find out the power value and energy value okay next one is measurement of self inductance okay by using the ac potentiometer we have to also find out the self inductance okay measurement of self inductance see here uh, so this is the this is the arrangement of measurement of self inductance okay so here see uh, you here you have to connect the resistor and the coil okay so i am giving a ac source and this is the potentiometer okay so uh, so here see the working of measurement of self inductance by adjusting the rheostat r and r dash and sliding cortex the current in the quadrature potentiometer become okay so whenever c whenever current will flows so whenever the potentiometer will be standardized so at that time you have to write the impedance z z equals so whenever the here whenever whenever here the potentiometer whenever here the potentiometer will be standardized okay so at that time oh, okay so at that time here uh, it will shows the a a resistance value and here we have the inductance so at that time there will be phase phase angles existing between these uh, two okay so that means uh, uh, that means theta c minus theta s okay theta s is nothing but across the rheostat and theta c is nothing but across the inductive coil so at that time here z means uh, uh, r plus j omega so that means in terms of ratio so sin theta c minus b s so at that time here z z value will be given by okay so rs into vc by vs okay so at that time z is also expressed in terms of okay rs vc by vs sin theta c minus theta s by using this one you have to find out the inductive self inductive uh, reactance okay so these are the applications of the ac potentiometers okay so um, now in this class we are discussing about the what are what is the potentiometer and what are the types of potentiometers that is dc potentiometers and ac potentiometers in the dc potentiometer we have to discussing the a crompton's dc potentiometer and uh, so that means it is working on the only dc and in ac potentiometers we have to two types okay so that is uh, ac will be expressed in polar forms and uh, rectangular forms that is in coordinate forms depending upon that ac potentiometers are classified into two types those are um, uh, polar potential polar ac potentiometers and uh, say next one is uh, coordinate type uh, ac potentiometers so you have to see the working of the polar type and coordinate type okay so and you have to see the applications of both dc potentiometers and ac potentiometers thank you